Okay, let's look at uh, part two of the neuron. The neuron contains dendrites, cell body. It also contains nucleus. It also contains the axon hillock. It contains the axon. It also has myelin sheath. Those with myelin sheath, we call them uh, myelinated neurons. Okay, we saw the unique features of the neurons, if you remember very well. We saw unique features of the neurons. We said that um, they have nisogranules. We also said they do not have a centrosome, and they have processes called the, the axons or dendrites, to mention just a few. Now, the parts of the neuron, we need to remember they are the nerve cell body, which is also called the pericardium. We also have the dendrite. We also have the axon. These are the three parts of the neuron. And then the neuron also has the cell membrane just like any other cell in the body. Although this kind of cell membrane it has high density of ion channels, which can allow influx of sodium, can also allow efflux of potassium. As we know, the cell membrane is an external boundary and it has a thickness of about uh, 8 to the power negative 9 meters. That's how thick the cell membrane is. Or if you want, you can say 6 to 8 nanometers because we know nanometer is to the power negative 9. Just like any other cell membrane, it is made up of the phospholipid. It's made up of the phospholipid bilayer. Okay. And then we said the one of the parts of the neuron is the nerve cell body, also called the axon. I mean, also called the pericardion. So within the cell body, okay, we are going to see there's a cytoplasm, which is also known as a neuro, neuroplasm. Now the presence of neurites, that is processes, as you can see, are uh, attached to the cell body, the dendrites. It will increase the surface area of the cell body for receiving signals from the axons and uh, other neurons. Now, synthesis of uh, proteins, phospholipids, and other macromolecules occurs in the, in the cell body. So it's a, the cell body is a trophic center of the neuron, just like any other cells of the body. Now, as you can see, this is a very big nucleus so a large euchromatic nucleus is seen with uh, the prominent nucleolus if you remember euchromatic from histology it means these are lightly packed form of chromatin okay as opposed to heterochromatin heterochromatin okay just to remember to remind you the euchromatin and heterochromatin are the two major categories of chromatin uh, higher order structure. Euchromatin and heterochromatin. Now when we say heterochromatin, this has condensed chromatin and is inactive form. It, it is inactive for transcription. Why euchromatin, as we can see in the nerve cell body, has loose chromatin structure and active for transcription. So the type of uh, nucleus here, it's the euchromatic nucleus. Now what other structures are you going to see within the soma? We're going to see the large nucleus, which I've talked about. We're going to see the nissel granules. Okay. 
you are going to see the new uh, the neurofibrils. You're going to see the neurofibrils. We know the neurofibrils comprises of the microtubules, microfilaments, etc. You're going to see the mitochondria, which are the powerhouse of the cell producing ATP. We are going to see also the Golgi apparatus, which are involved in uh, packaging of uh, synthesized proteins. So the neurofibrils and nasal bodies are found only in the nerve cells and not in other cells. Okay. The neurofibrils and the nasal bodies are found only in the soma of the new of the neurons. What can you what can we say about the nasal bodies? Okay. This diagram you can see the nasal bodies. They are basophilic granules found in the cytoplasm. Remember, first of all, the nasal bodies are responsible for synthesis of proteins that are carried in the into the dendrites and the axon. So where is protein synthesis is taking place in the neuron? It is taking place in the nasal uh, bodies. They are basophilic. Basophilic meaning they, they like basic stains. Example of other basi uh, basophilic structures are the nucleic acids. Okay. DNA, the RNA. And these are stained paper. If you remember the <coughs> the acidic stains, the, the acidophilic, we have uh, structures such as they stain red or pink. Okay. So the initial bodies are basophilic. They easily react with hematoxylin which binds to them and stain them purple. Now, the nasal bodies are only found in the soma and dendrites and not in the axons. And you cannot find them in the axon hillock, as you can see here. So they are only found in the soma and the dendrites. So how can you distinguish a dendrite from um, axons? It's by the presence of these same initial bodies. Okay. And then we have also the uh, neurofibrils. These structures look like threads. A network present in the soma and nerve process. So the neurofibrils do not just confuse yourself. It's just made up of microfilament and microtubules. And uh, the presence of neurofibrils, like uh, the nasal bodies, is another unique feature of the neuron. Okay. It's another unique feature of the neuron. And then we have the dendrites. The dendrites, how can we describe them? Hmm? How can we describe them? Very important. They have greater diameter than, than axons. Okay, they have greater diameter than the axons. They are unmyelinated. The content of the perinuclear cytoplasm of the cell body and the cytoplasm of the dendrites are similar. Okay, with the exception of the Golgi apparatus. 
and the other thing is that dendrites they have short blunt structures projecting at points along the dendrites these are called dendritic spines so they have uh, short blunt structures projecting at points along the dendrites these can only be visible with uh, silver staining methods they are called the dendritic spines now the shapes of the dendritic spines constantly changes as we are going to see this forms the basis of memory now the dendrites are shorter than the axons the dendrites are shorter than the axons so these are some of the features of the dendrites but what's their function they receive information from an, uh, from other neurons or from the external environment and carry information to the cell body so they receive information now structures such as dendritic spine they serves as initial processing site for synaptic signals number three dendritic, dendritic spines are of key importance in the constant changes of the neuroplasticity underlying adaptation learning and uh, memory so we are going to see that uh, in the mechanism of memory in the mechanism of learning the dendrites undergoes what we call neuroplasticity okay so those are the functions of the dendrites one they receive information from neurons or from the environment number two dendritic spine serve an, an initial site where the synaptic processing of synapses synaptic signals processing of synaptic signals true we are going to see that dendrite spines undergo constant change which forms the basis of neuroplasticity adaptation and learning okay and then we have the axons axon is also known as a nerve fiber in a group of nerve fibers form the nerve initial the, the from the nerve initial segment is the first 50 to 100 micrometers of the axons it emerges from the axon hillock and the axon hillock this is it's a small conical elevation on the soma where the axon arises and then when we hear of the word axolema is the plasm membrane of the axon and then axoplasm this is a cytoplasm in the in the axons what's the function of the same axons as we are going to discuss the nervous system we are going to see that the axon transmit impulses away from the nerve cell body okay Number two, we are going to see that action potential originates from the axon hillock. We are going to see also that uh, initial segment of the axons helps to maintain neuro, uh, neuron polarity. It's a site of action potential firing. Okay. The next, around the axon, there can also be what we call a myelin sheath. They can be what we call a myelin shift. Those neurons that are, have a myelin, they are called myelinated. Those that do not have, they are called unmyelinated. Now, what is what is the nature of this myelin? Remember, the myelin shift is a lipoprotein shift. Okay? Meaning it's made up of lipids and the proteins. That insulates the myelin, the myelinate, the myelinated nerve fiber. That's number one, it helps in insulation. Number two, it's responsible for faster conduction of impulses, which we call saltatory conduction. Okay, so in this uh, lipoprotein, we are going to see that it's made up of uh, uh, cholesterol, lecithin, and uh, cerebroside, also called sphingomyelin. Okay. The, the lipids 
we have the cholesterol, lecithin, and uh, cerebrocyte, which is also called sphingomyelin. The proteins in the myelin sheath, because we said it's a lipoprotein, so the, lip, uh, the protein in the myelin sheet, we have the myelin basic proteins, which is abbreviated as MBP. We have the myelin protein zero. Okay, and we also have myelin, uh, myelin protein 22. Although the most uh, significant is the, the myelin basic proteins. Now, the process by which myelin sheath is formed is called myelinogenesis. In the central nervous system, that is, uh, that is the, the brain and the spinal cord, there are a group of cells which I discussed last time. They are called oligodendro, oligodendrocytes. These are responsible for myelination. But in the peripheral nervous system, the Schwann cells are responsible for myelination. So the process by which myelin sheath is formed is called myelinogenesis. Okay. So this is, these are the steps of uh, protein formation. I mean, uh, myelination. So we have the axon, okay, which is lying near the Schwann cells. These are the Schwann cells. Number two, the axon invaginates, uh, invaginates the Schwann cells. As you can see, it invaginates the Schwann cells. Number three, Okay, there's a further invagination of the Schwann cells. There's a thin layer of Schwann cells. Cytoplasm persists as the neurolemma. I mean, um, there's in the step three here. Step two, we are saying the axon invaginates the Schwann cells. Step three, we are saying that uh, uh, the meso axon formed by further invagination by the axon. Okay. And then uh, the meso axon it makes several turns around the axon. Lipids are deposited between the layers of the meso axon, and then the myelin sheath is uh, formed, which is step four. There's a thin layer of Schwann cells. Cytoplasm persists as uh, the neurolemma. Okay, let's not confuse ourselves. We just need to know that before myelin, uh, myelinogenesis, the Schwann cells of the neurolemma are very close to the axolemma, which is step one, as in the case of unmyelinated nerve fibers. So the membrane of Schwann cells is uh, double-layered. The Schwann cells wrap up and rotate around the axis cylinder of the axon in many concentric layers. The concentric layers fuse to produce myelin sheath but uh, the cytoplasm of the cell is not deposited. Outermost membrane of the Schwann cells remain as the neurilemma. Okay, the outermost cell remains as the neurilemma. So this is the neurilemma I'm talking about. This is a thin membrane which surrounds the axis cylinder. It is also called the neurilemma sheath. Now, what's the function of the neurilemma? It's very important to mention. It covers the nine myelinated nerve fibers. It is necessary in the formation of myelin sheath in myelinated nerve fibers. But note that the neurilemma is absent in the central nervous system. That is the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, it is absent. Hence, the oligodendrocytes are responsible for myelinogenesis. And then we have the, this is the functional, we have the neutroph neutrophins. These are the family of proteins that induce survival development and function of the neurons. 
They belong to the class of growth factor secreted proteins that can signal particular cells to survive, differentiate, or grow. Okay, so where are these neutrophins coming from? So many tissues in the body like muscles, the neurons, and the astrocyte, they are able to secrete these uh, neutrophils. Okay, but the, the most important functions of these is that they facilitate initial growth of nerve cells, they facilitate initial development of nerve cells in the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. They promote survival of the nerve cells. They promote repair of nerve cells and help in neurotransmission. In other words, we're saying neutrophils, one, they help in development of nerve cells. Two, they help in the repair of nerve cells. Three, they are involved in growth, that is facilitate initial growth of nerve cells in the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Four, they are involved in transmission, neurotransmission, and uh, the last, which is five, they are involved in the survival of the nerve cells. So these are the functions. If you are taught to ask to describe the function of the neutrophils, you say DRGTS. Okay. These are examples of uh, various neutrophils. Okay, you'll be able to see them like uh, this one is nerve growth factor. Okay. Brain derived nerve growth factor, and so on and so forth. Okay, this is the mechanism of uh, action of the neutrophils, not neutrophils, ne neurotrophic factors. This is the mechanism of action. Okay, but the most important thing is the nerve growth factor, which was discovered in 1996. It promotes repair and uh, mild and shift uh, development. And it's just important that uh, nerve growth factor can also be extracted from snake vono, venom and the mouse maxillary salivary glands. So this nerve growth factor may be used to treat various conditions such as uh, Alzheimer's disease. It can be used to treat neuron degeneration in the spinal cord. It can be used to treat sympathetic neuron diseases and neuron degeneration in aging okay so those are the function of the nerve growth factor I'm talking about so we've come to the end of the neuron let me make a summary what is a neuron we said neuron these are excitable cells of the body that are able to carry electrical impulse they form the basis of the nervous system Two, three ways of classifying of neurons. We say they can be classified according to the number of poles, the functional classification according to the function, and the length of the axon. Name the three parts of the neuron. We need to know that the neuron is made up of the dendrites, the cell body, which is also called the perikaryon, and the axon. And then we said the three functions of the of the dendrite, the three functions of the dendrite. The dendrites receive information from other neurons in form of the external environment. The dendrites, specifically the dendritic, the dendritic spines, serve as the initial processing site for, synap for synaptic signals. And uh, the third function is that the dendritic spines of key importance in the constant changes of the neuroplasticity, underlying adaptation, learning, and memory. Okay. Three functions of the axons. We say axon transmit impulses away from the nerve cell body. 
axons also, like the axon hillock, that's where the origin of an axon potential, like in the initial segment, number three, helps to maintain neuron polarity. Okay. The other thing we looked at, the function of the myelin. Myelin is responsible for faster conduction of impulses, which we call saltatory conduction. The myelin sheath is also involved in insulation because it's made up of lipoprotein. And then what's the function of the neurotrophins? Okay, we said the neurotrophins, they are DRGTS. They, they promote development of nerves. They promote repair of nerves. They promote growth of the nerves. They help in neurotransmission and they help in the survival of uh, nerve. Thank you very much for your attention. So this marks the end of part two of Neuron.